essential lines and forms which make for a subversive body of work. Kubra Khadimi's paintings and performances meant she was forced to flee her home country of Afghanistan. The artist is now living and creating here in Paris, where her latest exhibition, The Two-Page Book, is currently showing at the Eric Moucher Gallery. She joins us here in the studio to tell us more. Hi, Kubra. Hello. Now, this collection of paintings is so striking. The first thing we notice are these female bodies. Tell us about them, what they represent, the role they play. Um, in this exhibition, I, um, I try to create the whole universe of, like, um, well, all feminine, of course, since I draw only body of women. I focused on this part of um, Afghan popular culture, like, just among women, and where we... Um, we practice expressing verbally our sexuality and uh, well how 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 we feel about it because it's of course it is a taboo it can go very far when they, when we talk and um, I literally took the references from what I have I myself have uh, experienced while heard around when it comes to like it comes to this space, and um, um, and I have realized that how subversive it is, how poetic it is, how it's it's, it's purely just female sexuality. I, you mentioned poetry, for example. I wanted to bring that up. In addition to the figures in your work, there's text as well in Farsi. Can you tell me about the literary dimension here? Um, uh, well, I grew up also in my culture. I grew up with... Uh, this uh, presence of po poetry in with like we live in, it's just uh, I, well I grew up with with uh, especially Rumi like uh, he's one of my very I mean um, favorite poem, <laughs> and uh, I have uh, while I was making while I was making this drawing I read a lot and oh, I'll, I I know a lot of references but I go back to it and I dig in his poetry and I found that there are there are there are parts that go perfectly within my drawings, within these female figures. And, uh, well, I used... <laughs> now, bodies uh, got you into trouble at a young age. I heard a story about your mother catching you drawing. Can you tell us about that? This drawing, I was five years old when I made it. And uh, I, I exactly remember when I, when I draw it, it was after visiting of uh, Hammam. Well, Hammam is, of course, it's just a uh, woman. In the bathhouse, <laughs> exactly. naked, yeah. Yeah, all life. For the first time, I saw a lot of woman body. And I was, today I can say I was fascinated. But at that time, I didn't know what was my, my feeling towards it, why I was moved. And well, it was as I came back with my sisters and my mom, I took uh, my sketchbook. Sometimes I used to have. And, uh, of course, I was happy to have it. So I draw... Um, like women, <laughs> all na all naked, and uh, um, and then I right after that I tear the page apart. I don't know why I felt I have to do it. I've never done any of my drawing. I tear it apart and uh, I quickly hide it under carpet because there was the taboo there. Now we've seen some of those themes in your work, uh, pieces you produced at the Agency of Artists in Exile here in Paris. And in other pieces, you've gone further than just pen and ink when it comes to using the female form as a mode of expression. A performance Kubra created in 2015 saw her take to the streets of Kabul dressed in quite a particular way. Let's take a look. <laughs> Nakubra, can you tell us more about what you were saying with this piece and then how it was received? Um, this performance, uh, well, it's one of my performances, but the last one I did in my country was, um, as it's called armor, and I, it's, it's just in the image, it's like I'm wearing an armor, and it is a feminine, of course, armor. Um, this piece, um, I made it in, um, in response to... Uh, to um, sexual harassment in public space that we, pra we, well, we practice, we, we live with it. And this piece was to, to reflect it in the, one of the most challenging area in Kabul. 
and uh, to show it and also it's like it's a walk it's through a walk so a living body my body which is like walking through and it had consequences for you as well um well it was um it, it was i it was successfully finished like in terms of like from the point i start and i and i finished it but uh, well i was no more able to live in my country indeed yeah now you grew up in afghanistan as you mentioned spending your childhood and teenage years in a country rocked by political instability and eventually all out war one of the most arresting acts of cultural destruction there in recent years was in 2001 when the bamiyan buddhas were obliterated by the taliban the musée guimet here in paris is paying tribute now with a new exhibition Sylvain Rousseau and Andrew Hillier take a look. 4,000 photos seamlessly stitched together to create 15 breathtaking panoramic images. Pascal Convert's project started back in 2016 when the artist visited Afghanistan's majestic cliffs of Bamiyan. La précision de l'image. The image details very sharp. When I went there, I wanted to capture the tiniest stone to bring back an emotional recollection. When we get there, it's like we're face to face with the world. A cultural crossroads lying on the ancient Silk Road, Bamiyan prospered as a center of Buddhist teaching in the sixth century. Two giant Buddhist statues sculpted into the cliffs themselves once served as a reminder of this golden age. They stood until March the 11th, 2001, when the Taliban, having recently conquered the area and destroyed them, and ordered the execution of 10,000 Hazara Shiites. This exhibition is dedicated to the memory of Joseph and Ria Hakan, but also to the memory of Bamiyan's people and the Hazara Shiites. Bamiyan was revealed to the West in 1923 by Joseph Hakan, a French archaeologist. As president of the French archaeological delegation to Afghanistan, he established a cultural bridge that endures to this day. Most of the works are held here. That's because half of what was discovered in the Bamiyan was brought back to the Guimet Museum of Asian Arts. The historical records drawn up by the French delegation were also brought here. So we have a duty to remember them. 20 years after the Taliban reduced the giant statues to rubble, artifacts like these giant hands are all that's left to remind us of Bamiyan's past. Bamiyan was the first assassination carried out this century and was the harbinger of other rivers of blood. After their destruction on March the 11th, there was September the 11th, the twin Buddhas, the twin towers, the twin aspects of the number 11. The Taliban had hoped to wipe out the legacy of a civilization. Since then, whether it be in Mosul or Timbuktu, cultural destruction has increasingly become a weapon of war. Kubra, beyond the loss of those Buddhas, countless artifacts have been destroyed or looted over the years in Afghanistan. In your opinion, what sort of effect is that going to have on the country in the years to come? Well, um, right now, uh, these days, we are passing, we are going through a very hard and delicate time in Afghanistan. Uh, well, it's been two days. The girls are no more than 12 years old, are no more, are no more able to, will not be able to sing. And uh, it's like, uh, it's just unacceptable. It is just horrible to imagine that. Because in Afghanistan, the music has been like one of the, very important and that we kept as a like cultural like like as a cultural activity heritage heritage and always we have, we it was just very much alive in recent i mean during these recent years our singers women singers are singing in qazi stadium which is um during taliban exactly in that place taliban in 90s were stoning women to death in that place and today like the women are singing there it's just unimaginable to go back to the darkest time of Afghanistan in the his its history, for women, of course. 
Now, I believe that coming back to your work, you've been working with actor and performer Daniel Petro in recent months, but you've not been in the same place. Can you tell us more about that project, about how you collaborate uh, virtually during a pandemic? Um, oh, well, he's my partner. We are, we are apart, but um, we are just... Uh, well, we, we both are artists, and uh, beyond our own relation, it's, of course, it's, it, it's just... We are just creative. <laughs> I mean, we haven't stopped working. We, um, we are um, uh, in this project, in this collabora collaborative project. We are emphasizing and showing our uh, our each other's or both of us, our, both of us identity and uh, st stereotypical, of course, but also uh, derived from the political relation between United States and and Afghanistan like through history and, and today, of course. Now, finally, we asked you to give us a cultural tip, something you've enjoyed recently, and you pointed us in the direction of artist Prune Nouri, her installation, The Erogenous Amazon. Uh, tell us why she resonates with you as an artist. Um, uh, not only because she's my really good friend and very close one, but also she's a great artist. I mean, I think that I found myself in her work, in her voice, and of course in her, like, un her this, this divine universe that she has in her in her art um, it's just um, the question of how she's sensible to the body of women place of women and uh, that the way she's using her own body and her own like history and personal history of course um, in her work thank you very much for the tip Kubra and thanks for coming in okay. we'll leave you with a glimpse of Prune Nori's piece at the Bon Marché department store do remember to check out our website for more arts and culture and you can follow us on social media too. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this.